Hi, doing everybody, Jonathan here, and in this video, I'm gonna go over three reasons why your clients may still be struggling with fat or weight loss. I get a lot of emails from you guys saying that your client is following their nutrition program to a T and their exercise program to a T, and they're still struggling with fat or weight loss. So I'm gonna go over some habits that you can explain to your clients which will help them in that effort. But before I do, as always, if you have not yet, Click on that link up there, subscribe to my newsletter, as it will send you short emails every Monday on how to see success in the fitness industry. If you just happen to stumble upon this video, you can click on the YouTube icon below at any time, and that will give you access to videos that I make every Wednesday to help you see success in the fitness industry based on questions that I get the most. Now finally, if you subscribe to both, Thank you, and if you find this video useful, I definitely ask that you click on the like button below as every like that I get helps this channel. Now, let's go over these three tips. Now, whenever a trainer tells me that their client is struggling with fat loss or weight loss, despite the fact that they're following their nutrition guide and their exercise guide, I have to ask the trainer, are you doing your part? Because your clients will see the best success if you give them accountability. And the best way to give them accountability is through daily nutrition journal reviews. Nowadays, we have so many forms of technology, and I find that the best one is going to be MyFitnessPal. It's available on any app store, and it allows you to communicate with your client. It really only takes one minute per day per client in order to do a thorough review of what they're eating. And just knowing that you're looking at what your clients are eating will motivate your clients to be more disciplined with their habits. So if you're looking for information on how to best imply nutritional coaching in the technical end as well as the strategic end, I definitely recommend that you check out my Dumbbells to Dollars course as there is a section dedicated toward nutritional coaching in addition to sales, marketing, building your business, giving great workouts, and getting organized. So, if you haven't checked out my course, click on that image over there after you're done watching this video and learn some more about the course. But let's go over these three tips. And these three tips are not tips that you probably haven't given your client before, but I find that clients respond best when you give them scientific reasons why they need to apply these habits because these are things that they don't want to do. So when you explain how these habits affect your clients on a hormonal level or a physiological level, I think that your clients will be more likely to take your word for it and then they'll be able to see success. All right. Now, tip number one is going to be to get adequate sleep. I always ask my clients during their training sessions what time they went to sleep and what time they woke up because I want to know the quality and length of their sleep. Mainly because on a practical level, if your client is awake more hours a day, that gives them more opportunities to snack and eat. But on a physiological level, you're able to control two hormones which affect your desire to eat. Those two hormones are going to be ghrelin and they're going to be leptin. So essentially ghrelin is going to tell you that you want to eat a little bit more, whereas leptin says, I'm satisfied and I can stop eating. So when you get adequate amounts of sleep, ghrelin is decreased, you have less of a desire to eat, leptin is increased, you have more of an understanding that you're satisfied, and you don't tend to just like eat throughout the day even though you're not hungry. So getting adequate amounts of sleep will help you in the effort of maintaining your desire to eat food when you're really not hungry. So what are some good practices to make sure that you can get more sleep? Number one is to help your client to understand that work that isn't due tomorrow can be saved for tomorrow. And one of my personal favorites, you want to give yourself three hours or two hours before you go to sleep to go lights out. And the lights out just means no television, no phone, and no computer. So when those things are on, you tend to be awake and alerted. The more that you can get rid of the electricity and the electronics and all that stimulation, uh, the sooner that you get to sleep, it'll be a lot easier for your clients to actually fall asleep and stay asleep. Now the second tip is going to be to decrease stress. Now you've probably had stress addressed in your training manuals as they went over the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, which causes the fight or flight response. But you have to understand that stress also activates a number of hormones. So when you get that fight or flight response, you get a spike in adrenaline, you get a spike in corticotrophin, and you get a spike in cortisol. Now the first two hormones, adrenaline and corticotrophin, 
essentially are going to uh, suppress your appetite, but only for a short period of time. All right, that's whatever time the body is used to taking to either run or fight, whether it's you know running from some prehistoric animal or whatever the case may be. The body decreases the appetite for a short period of time with those two hormones. However, cortisol is the hormone that tells you, okay, it's time to eat, and cortisol lasts longer. So when your clients go through these constant waves of stress, then yes, their appetite is suppressed for a short period of time. That cortisol hangs around for a long period of time and almost spills over to your client's next stress bout. So if your client is constantly stressed throughout the day or throughout the week, yeah, they're not hungry for a little bit, but then that cortisol kicks in and they're constantly hungry. They're constantly eating. Moreover, when it comes to the fight or flight response, if your client is stressed out at work, there really is no running or no fighting. So the client does still feel the need to move or self-medicate, and they do that with the act of eating. So the more that your client can decrease the stress, the less they'll want to eat. It's not as much an emotional thing as it is a physiological thing. So how do you get your client to decrease stress? Well, you can always remind them that work that doesn't have to be done right now can be saved for tomorrow. The same thing with sleep. You want to encourage them to separate themselves from people that cause stress or you want to help them deal with people that cause them stress by not giving them their energy and help them to understand that the more that they give people that cause stress their energy, the more that they're staying back in their goal for fat loss or weight loss. Um, you also can give them tips. Um, I find that playing drums decreases stress. I always recommend teaching your clients boxing or doing mitt work with them, allowing them to hit something decreases stress, or you can recommend or do with your client uh, assisted stretching or yoga. So anything that you can give them and any reminder that you can give them that their stress directly affects all their good habits will help your client to understand, you know what, my boss is not worth my stress. You know, my kids acting out a little bit is not worth my stress. And the more that you can impart this to your client, the better off they'll be. Now, the last habit that you want to impart to your client is increased water. Now, we all know the body's 80% water. We all know that the body helps to transport nutrients throughout the body. However, the one thing that can hit home with your client is the fact that water is necessary to lubricate the intestines to get waste out of the body. So you'll find that if you were to take a fiber supplement, you might get constipated. And one of the best ways to kind of loosen things up is to drink a lot of water, drink a lot of fluid because it lubricates your intestines. And you can go to the bathroom more. The average person carries anywhere between five and 15 pounds of undigested waste in the colon and uh, dehydration contributes greatly to that. Also, you'll find that clients tend to overeat mainly because all foods have some trace form of water. However, most people don't realize that their desire to consume comes from thirst instead of hunger. So I would encourage you to encourage your client to drink eight to 16 ounces of water before each meal and you'll find that they're fuller quicker and they're satisfied much longer. So the consumption of water will definitely help. So those are three tips explained in the hormonal and or physiological sense, which may help your client to better approach their health and fitness, hopefully help them see success, help you to refer more clients, and so you can make more money. And that's the point of the channel. So I hope you took notes, watch this video again, understand how I explain these, explain them to your clients, and I think you'll get a much more positive response. So I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, comment below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, click on the YouTube channel over there. If you haven't checked out my Dumbbells to Dollars course, click on the image after this is over. And stay tuned because over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go over a new game that you can play in your boot camps. And I'm working on a series specifically for marketing, which is going to be very helpful for you guys. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Like the video, thanks for watching, and as always, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels all get rest, don't slap anybody. Love your clients, they'll love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day, and you have a good one.